Now an update to an I-Team investigation of a local cemetery accused of disgracing the dead. Since our first story aired two weeks ago, more than three dozen people have called and emailed us sharing disturbing stories about Beaches Memorial Park in Atlantic Beach. Tonight, three local families tell the I-Team's Jennifer Waugh they actually had to fight for weeks to get their loved one's ashes. I was there holding her as she took her last breath. Painful memories of a dear friend's last moments. Karen Hawkins was the most amazing personality. She had an esteemed career in medicine as a nurse anesthetist and called herself the Energizer Bunny because she was nonstop on the go all the time. When COPD and heart failure robbed Hawkins of her health, she entrusted Marie Reeder, her friend of 25 years, to fulfill her final wish. She loved her two black labs very much, and she had distributed their ashes, and she wanted to be near them. And so that would have been at the park, the Memorial Park. Hawkins had already paid the Atlantic Beach Cemetery's sister company, First Coast Funeral Home, for her cremation three years earlier. This is her contract. But when Reeder tried to coordinate picking up her ashes, she says nearly every time she called the office, no one would answer. I didn't even know then if they had picked up her body from the hospital. Hawkins died March 12th. Days passed, then weeks. After nearly a month of no news, on April 8th, Reader filed this complaint with the State Division of Funeral, Cemetery, and Consumer Services. Where was she? What did they do with her? Hoping a state investigator could get the funeral home owner, Nader John Rayan, to answer that question, except... And I believe it was um, April the 20th that I did receive a letter of acknowledgement of the complaint and that an investigator had been assigned to my case. So you're talking about it took two weeks just for them to acknowledge that they received your complaint? That seems long. Um, yes, when you're in the situation that I was in, it did feel like a long time. Reader expected immediate action from the state. That never happened. Now it's been eight weeks since my loved one passed away. I didn't even know where she was. Eight weeks. That's right. Two months of not knowing where or what had happened to Karen Hawkins remains. It was just unbelievable to me. I, I just, I, I couldn't imagine why there would be no response. 59 days after Karen Hawkins died, on May 9th, a state investigator finally called Reader to tell her her best friend's ashes were ready to be picked up at the cemetery where Hawkins had paid $2,300 for her own cremation. What did they tell you when they finally handed Karen's ashes over? Were they kind? Were they sensitive? Were they, were they sympathetic? Have a nice day. That's what I heard. Did you feel that they cared at all? Absolutely not. We trusted these people to do their job. You know, to one, take care of my mother and ensure, ensure that everything was going to be taken care of. That's what we paid for. Cassandra Hutchins and her stepfather, Warren Miller, are angry. They had to fight for their loved one's ashes, too. I started calling right after because he told me, he told us that she would be cremated immediately. They planned to memorialize their wife and mother, Donna Orner, days after she died from cancer. But just like with Marie Reeder, they say no one at Beaches Memorial Park would give them any information about the status of her cremation. Because I was calling every Tuesday and Thursday. The few times you did get through, you get a, a secretary would answer. She said, oh, he's dealing, dealing with a funeral. He'll call you back. So he really wants to talk to you. He'll call you back as soon as he's done. They never call you back. Donna Orner's family paid $4,345 for her cremation and interment. She died December 23rd. Days passed, Christmas, New Year's, the first week of January. Finally, after 21 days, January 13th, Beaches Memorial Park released her ashes. Her family, though, is still tormented. Because right now we're both wondering if she was even cremated or if we really even have her remains, because we don't know. Because at this point, he's lied so much to us, we don't know whose remains we have. The same weeks-long delay also happened to this Jacksonville woman's family. This is Hazel Rayford. She died of cancer on February 22nd. And she also paid First Coast 
Funeral Home, which is the sister company of Beaches Memorial Park, ahead of time for the cremation of her remains. In fact, you can see the total right here. You know, and unfortunately, her daughter says that she spent two weeks, Tom, trying to get some kind of answers from the cemetery. And it was only after she hired an attorney that she was finally given her mother's ashes. But she says that when she went there, Tom, to pick up the ashes, first she was given the wrong ashes. And then when she finally received her mother's remains, they were given to her in a reusable shopping bag. Oh, Jen, what? What reason does the funeral home give for it taking so long to deliver these ashes? Yeah, for all three of these family members. Well, we called the owner. We've continued to call the owner since we started this series of stories. And we don't ever hear back. In fact, now, when we did call him just last Friday, the voice message, his mailbox is full. So I can't even reach him. But I did reach out, of course, to the attorney who's representing him. And I still have not heard back. As far as these families, they say they never received any type of satisfactory response at all as to why it took so long to get their loved ones ashes. Jen, thank you.